Welcome to our second lesson in our Introduction to Material Processing course, Part 4. In this lesson, we've been focused on understanding the impact that four key variables can have. Temperature, pressure, environment, and time. Seeing how they impact our material processes. Today's video is focused on the last one, time. Now, as I said at the end of part three, time is everywhere in processing. Very few processes, if any, are considered instantaneous. But the amount of time that a process takes can also dramatically impact the quality. Let's think of an example from each of the videos that we've discussed so far. We'll start with temperature. We've talked about solidifying materials, think our chocolate from the introduction but the rate at which we solidify these materials can also have a profound impact on the outcome. Let's take steel as an example. Steel is an alloy of iron and carbon, generally between 0.02 and 1.7 weight percent carbon. We can see the phase diagram of iron and carbon here. Since we're looking at composition and temperature in this diagram, our pressure is held constant at atmospheric pressure. Depending on the composition and temperature, our steel can have different crystal structures or phases. For example, this region here is called gamma or austenitic steel and has a face-centered cubic crystal structure. Down here is alpha or ferritic steel with a body-centered cubic crystal structure. This two-phase region, where most of my steel alloys exist at room temperature, has both my ferrite and an intermetallic called cementite or Fe3C which has a composition of 6.7 weight percent carbon. But this diagram is showing what exists for my material at equilibrium. Think extremely slow cooling rates. What happens when I vary the cooling rate? If I cool my steel slowly, I end up with a microstructure of steel we refer to as perlite. This is formed by a diffusion process and consists of alternating layers of my two phases, ferrite and cementite. This is what I expect when I look at my phase diagram. But what if I use a much faster cooling rate? I end up with something called martensite. I don't see martensite anywhere on this phase diagram here. That's because martensite is actually a non-equilibrium phase. It's formed by a diffusionless transformation and gives us a very hard steel. It also has a body-centered tetragonal crystal structure so it doesn't match either my gamma or my alpha. Perlite and martensite have very different mechanical properties, so it's important to know how quickly you cooled your steel so you know what properties your final material will have. Now let's look at the impact that time can have with pressure. If we think back to our video, we looked at stamping objects out of sheet metal using dyes. Now, the rate at which these dyes apply my pressure is important. If I go too fast, well, I might tear or damage the material. But if I go too slow, the material might not deform as I expect, and my part won't turn out the way I want it to. So, knowing which rate or how fast or slow to apply this pressure is critical for this process. How do environment and time fit together? Well, if I'm talking about a chemical or UV reaction, these take time to complete. Thinking back to our video, let's go back to our photolithography example. If I'm exposing my photoresist to UV light, but I don't do it for long enough, my photoresist might not completely crosslink. This will lead to an unclear pattern and ultimately ruin my structure that I'm trying to make. Not an ideal outcome. And with that, we're wrapping up our discussion on the impact that these four variables, temperature, pressure, environment, and time can have on my material processes. Depending on the process you're using, you might care about one, two, or all of them. What I hope you've gathered from this video is that you need to understand which variables are at play in your process and the impacts that they can have. The better you understand this, the more likely you are to process your material correctly and get the properties and performance out of your material and part that you hope to at the end. Now we're moving on to our last lesson in our course, which is focused on the impact that material processing can have on our environment, our planet Earth. We'll look at a material's life cycle in terms of processing, highlight specific areas, 
and talk about some of the challenges that today's engineers face surrounding this topic.